Hey y'all, today I'm going to be talking about jigs. I've got a pile on my anvil here. I'm going to show you some different ones. But most of what I use these for is for turning the hooks, uh, the ends, the loop, big loops on the hooks. That way you get a consistent, nice round shape on them. But as a blacksmith, you can make jigs for all kinds of stuff. If you're doing like a production run of multiple items and you want them all to be the same, like for the dinner bell triangles, you can make a jig to where all your legs and all your angles, everything's the same. And it just helps you speed up the process, makes it a lot easier than trying to do everything by hand on the anvil. But there's two different ways you can make them. Well, for me anyways, it's ones I've made to go in my hardy hole. It's got the square shank on it. And then ones, I just use a piece of angle iron and I use them in the vise. Both of these are for making the hooks. Now, this is a bigger one I have here that is made for the uh, tripods that I make to make the big eye on the one leg. And this one, you see where this size is stepped down shorter. This one I use for swing arm cookers. And here in just a second, I'll show you an example. But I hook it in here, and where this is shorter, I can wrap it multiple times around the leg here. But the reason for that Oh, on these cookers here, just drive this stake in the ground, and you see your loop, it just holds on there just like that. And all it is is just the weight of the arm holds it in place. So you can slide it up or slide it down. Hang your pot from it, coffee pot. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. I've got a set of curtain rod holders that I've got to make, and the customer has requested six of them, and I need all six to match. So I'm going to make a jig, and then we're going to forge our piece, and I'll show you how to use the jig. As far as shop tools, this one right here is a really good one to have. It's a port band brand bandsaw, or port cable brand. Actually, I picked this up at auction for about $60. I've got my pieces cut here and sit in the vise. And for this design, I've already got a jig that I already had made for the first uh, loop in it. But this is going to be my curtain rod holder. I'm going to have this loop, then I'm going to have a big loop coming down to the flat that mounts to the wall. So this jig right here is going to be for the big loop right here. So what I've got for my measurements, they want to use a piece of three-quarter pipe for their curtain rod. So we've got our three-quarter pipe, and then they want it a little over two inches out from the wall. So I've got a piece of two-inch pipe. And I recommend as a blacksmith to invest in a welder and learn how to weld because you can buy jigs, but if you have a welder, you can make all the jigs you want. And by the time you buy three or four different jigs, you can buy yourself a cheap welder. Uh, normally, I would use my stick welder, but I have one that I've had for a while that I bought used and wasn't working. And I got it working, and I'm going to try it and see how it does. So I'm going to get everything here. I'm going to get the welder set up, and we're going to weld our pieces in place. But before I do that, I will say, and I know the stock I'm using is 3 8 uh, round stock for this. So once I get one welded, I'm going to use this as a spacer before I weld the other side. So I get the right distance between them.
If I can get a few more kinks, I got to work out on it. Trigger's not quite contacting the way it should. But I didn't give very much for it. I think I give $100 for the whole setup. But there's our first pipe welded on. So we're going to set our space. I can find my piece of scrap I had. And normally I would just weld this pipe and that'd be it, but I've got another piece underneath it. So I'm going to use this for multiple purposes. I'm not going to use it just for this one thing. We'll get our space set about right there. And see if I can get this tacked without moving it. Everything looks straight. Check my spacing. Uh, it's a little snug, but I think it'll work. got it all welded up there and we have a dual dual purpose jig if I can do one size drop that piece of pipe over that and I can do the size that we're using for this project move it around there you can see a little bit better so now that we got our jig made it's time to start forging we're going to go ahead and forge in our taper for our little scroll in. Got our nice taper all the way down. Should take just a few seconds to heat it up for the scroll.
We've got our scroll land in. It's time to use our jig. We've got us a heat. I'm going to dip the scroll in just to cool it off so we don't mess it up. I'm just hook it in right here. Come around, I got a nice half circle. And there's our hook to hold our curtain rod. And we'll take another heat and we'll use our jig we just made. We got this back up to temperature. I'm going to cool off my first hook just a little bit so I don't mess it up. Yeah, that's about what I was scared of. There's our hook. Using our jigs. Now I'll cut. May not cut any of that off, but flatten that out, put some screw holes in it. That will be our curtain rod bracket. So now that we've got our hooks in, I'm going to cut this down about five inches. Back up, we'll clean it up just a little bit, and that one will be done all but drilling the holes for the mounting screws. And so, one thing I did forget you've seen me throw the pipe off the jig, and I was focusing more on the video than what I was actually doing. But when you're making the jigs, you're going to give yourself just a little bit more room because the steel does expand when it's hot, and that's what happened on that. It got hot in the forge, it expanded, and then it wouldn't fit and what I had made, but it all worked out. Here's our finished hook for the curtain rods, drilled and countersunk for the screw holes. Uh, they requested them just to be left raw. They will paint them themselves, but that's it. That's how to make a jig, how to use it, and I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.